Great. So we are back now. And as we said before, now we are going to go into the documentary area. And we were lucky to have two people who will introduce you to their work in the Baltic Sea Philharmonic. And they will also say a little bit about the movie so, or the documentary. So please welcome on stage Katarina and Annika. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, hello everyone. It's a great, great pleasure to um, to be here and to meet you all virtually. I hope you already had an amazing first day with lots of interesting talks and discussions. And um, we brought a film with us, so um, hopefully in the next hour you can relax a bit and um, just enjoy the movie. We also want to thank the organizers for inviting us and for giving us the opportunity to be part of this great project and also um, to give us the platform to, to show our documentary Nordic Pulse. And before I talk a bit more about the Baltic Sea Philharmonic and um, the Nordic Pulse film, I want to shortly introduce myself. My name is Katharina, I'm from Germany and I am based in Berlin. And here I also work for the Baltic Sea Music Education Foundation. And um, we are doing education projects in the Baltic Sea region and are also mainly managing the Baltic Sea Philharmonic, which you will get to know um, quite a lot about in the film. I have been working here for around five years now. And I the tour and um, finally step by step it became a full-time job so I know the orchestra now for quite some time um, and now I'm doing communications and marketing at the Baltic Sea Philharmonic. For those of you who have never heard anything about the Baltic Sea Philharmonic it is an orchestra in a community of young talented musicians aged between 18 and 30 years old from all around the Baltic Sea region, namely from Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Germany, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia and Russia. And we are a touring orchestra. That means that all members are living in their countries where they are working or studying. And we are meeting around three to four times a year um, in one of the countries and then we come together for a week to rehearse and then we all go together on tour. And I'm very happy that I'm joined here today by a musician of the Baltic Sea Philharmonic, Annika. She's an oboe player and also from Germany. And Annika, maybe you want to say hi and um, shortly introduce yourself as well. Yes, hi. Thank you as well for the invitation. Uh, as Katharina said, I'm Annika. Uh, I play oboe since more than five years, I think now, in the Baltic Sea Philharmonic. I was a student then, and now I'm a professional musician. Uh, yes, and this is my hard project, let's say like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the film you're going to see now is called Nordic Pulse, and it's um, kind of a documentary about the Baltic Sea Philharmonic and its conductor Christian Jervi. The film was mainly shot in 2017, where we had two major European concert tours. And on these tours, we were joined by an American film team who followed the entire orchestra everywhere you can imagine. Um, starting from the arrival at the airport, um, traveling in the bus, rehearsing on stage, backstage. So yes, they were basically everywhere. And I think um, that's why the film gives quite a good impression on how touring with the Baltic Sea Philharmonic is. And maybe that's all that we will say now. And Annika and myself will be um, here after the movie and we are very curious to hear um, about your thoughts and your impressions on the film and also on the project, the Baltic Sea Philharmonic. And we are very happy to answer your questions. Um, and surely Annika also has a lot of things to say from her viewpoint as a musician. So now at first we wish you lots of fun with the movie and looking forward to see you later again.
Yeah, great. So now we will see the movie. And uh, sorry, I'm back again. But and then you can ask all the questions. So prepare and ask them in the chat. You know how it works for now. So. Sorry, yeah. that was me. I'll go back to you. Give me a second. No. Apparently, I have. I'm sorry. I'll I'll fix that in. A, I have to share that with my uh, camera on. So sorry for that. Yeah. Hope it will work now. Yeah. Good. Already. No. I'll ask our technical wizard. Why? Mm -hmm. I'm really sorry. No, it's not. people so maybe Annika can just talk a little longer and I will just fix that here hopefully in a second okay I just remember I forgot to say where I'm from I'm from Germany <laughs> <laughs> and okay. I'm from south of Germany yes. yeah okay Wait.
to actually let that play from another computer. We tested it before, but this is always life, how life is. And so we will try to have it to get that from another computer, get that fixed. Maybe in the meantime, I'll manage to get it from my screen so that we can use it. But currently, it just doesn't work that well. That's when technics, you can, yeah. We'll just wait and see and we will manage that in a really short time, I'm sure. Sorry. Yeah. So there were questions on the event chat. How was the orchestra ex uh, experience the pandemic? So what are you doing during the pandemic now currently? Can you? Should I stay? Okay. Um, yeah. Of course, we would have had some tours now in June and also before, but they are cancelled, of course, because we are, are from different countries and we cannot travel, we cannot have concerts and meet many people in one place, for sure, and we can't all have this distance we should have. So uh, we, uh, we made a video, so all of us... Um, we recorded and made audio and film recordings and sent that together and made the Shostakovich recording. There's also on YouTube. Maybe Katarina, you can share the link. I think we can now see the video finally and then afterwards yeah. you can share the link. So it's really nice and interesting documentary. I think a lot of people enjoyed it see it and there are also some questions in the chat if you want to answer them and yeah you can see them in the events chat and everybody else feel encouraged to ask questions about the orchestra and their mission and everything they are doing and i'll leave you alone with annika and katarina now have fun so yes welcome welcome back um Maybe before we, we go and answer the questions, um, just another note on the film. So um, basically in 60 minutes, you saw um, the story of the Vortex Philharmonic and Christian Yervi. And what I forgot to mention before is that the film is not published yet. So what you saw was um, kind of an exclusive um, preview. And uh, we are currently in the process of um, selling the film. And um, in the end of last year, in November, the film was officially premiered um, on a film festival in Tallinn, Estonia, at the Black Nights Film Festival. 
Um, but so far, this was the only official screening. And um, so therefore, we are really very curious to hear your opinion on the movie. Um, so it would be great if you could um, leave a comment um, in the chat. And yes, now maybe we can have a look at the questions. Maybe just to come back to the first um, question regarding the pandemic. So of course for us, it's, um, it has been a tough time or it is um, still a tough time, but because as you can imagine, as an orchestra, we live um, from the experience of um, playing concerts, of um, being on stage, interacting with each other. And um, we also had concert tours planned for May and also in June that we had to um, cancel, unfortunately. Um, but hopefully we will be back with our next tour in September. Um, yeah, we keep our fingers crossed that um, this is happening. And until then, we decided to go virtual and to do more digital um, projects. And Annika already um, told a bit about the Shostakovich video that we did. Um, so basically, just to sum it up again, we had a concert um, planned at the Berlin um, Concerthaus to celebrate uh, 75 years of the end of World War II. And on this concert, we wanted to play um, Shostakovich 7. And since the concert was cancelled, we decided to um, play um, the first movement online. So um, yes, the musicians, it were like 108 musicians of the Baltic Sea Philharmonic uh, in total who recorded themselves at home. And then we collected um, all the videos and the audio files and made one clip out of it. And um, yes, it turned out to be very impressive. And I will post um, the link into the chat so you can actually have a look. And I don't know, Annika, if you want to add anything on the, um, on the production or your experience of being part of this virtual orchestra. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was funny, funny because, because usually we are used to be really close. Really close and also and to also answer the answer next the question next that question was asked, uh, we are really like a family, like a Baltic family. So we don't feel uh, a lot of competition or elbows. We are really close. And this was kind of hard to record yourself and to see just yourself on the camera and to hear just a click and that's it. <laughs> so yeah. When I recorded, it was a bit strange, but then to see the video and to see what what they made of it, it really felt like always being with Baltic because you saw other faces and you knew kind of during your recording that everyone is doing that now. And I felt, I don't know, I had to smile when I, when I loaded it up, my recordings on the on the Dropbox, because I saw all the people also doing the same now <laughs> with their recordings, and that was cool. Yes, so um, I completely agree with Anika and um, what she said about um, the orchestra being a family, which is also um, maybe answering um, a bit of the other questions. It's um, it's really fascinating to see how, how close people get on tour and um, of course, it's a it's, it's a process when because the people don't know each other. It's um, people coming from, as you saw, people coming from all um, the different countries, and then um, they're meeting sometimes for the first time. Sometimes they come back for several years, like Annika, um, and they come together, uh, don't know each other, and then they create this beautiful music. And um, I think mainly through music, but also because we spend so much time together also um, backstage and um, apart from, from rehearsing. Um, yes, the entire orchestra in the end becomes a family and um, most musicians are very close. And that's, um, that, that's always uh, my, um, yes, I think that's like kind of my biggest motivation to be part of this because it's, it's really fascinating and impressive to see um, 
yeah what music can do and how easily people who who speak different languages have completely different backgrounds have never met each other but somehow we we all connected and um yeah this is uh, what i really like about this project Annika, I don't know if it's the same for you or... Um, yes, completely. Yeah. And I, when I watched the film now again, I, I remembered the first tours. It was sometimes really tough timetable because we had concerts on one day, then we traveled and on the same day we had the next. And it was really, really tough and a lot of rehearsals. And we were kind of traditional classic orchestra. So we played by scores and so on. But it was tough. And then, I don't know exactly the year, but <laughs> we played this Firebird one year by scores. And Christian began to say that, yeah, next year probably we will play this by heart. And we were like, no. <laughs> but then he did it and we did. And with this process, it's we grow, grow together much more. So it felt. I don't know. It was the same rehearsals. It was sometimes also tough traveling and the concerts and you needed a lot of power. But this playing from memory, this was the next level, really next level. And I feel the same like you, Katarina. It's, it's really a big family. And we have no borders and no, no country limits. That's so we don't care about our nationalities. This is gone. And um, you could also see in the movie, there were these scenes where we were in uh, Sweden and it was uh, outside on a field and um, we had like this game night and we call it Baltic Evening and we do it um, every second tour or so. And it's always an evening of um, like fun evening uh, where in some way we um, try to involve the different countries and the different cultures and this might be by um, forming teams and like we did like this game night and a quiz or um, yeah we did a pub quiz before or also one night where we were uh, more focusing on, on, on traditional folk elements from each country so um, in this way we also try to point out the differences of the countries, but also, of course, um, the similarities and all the things we have in common. And it's also, um, it, it also happens every time that people find so many similarities and, and things in common. And um, so that I think like the cultural differences, they don't play such a big role. It's, it's more that, um, yeah. Like we all think, okay, we, we, we have the Baltic Sea, which is connecting us. Um, we have the music that is connecting us. And actually it's, uh, yeah, we're not so different. And um, regarding the questions that um, there's a lot of competition, friendship or romance, I think that maybe Annika can answer the question more about the competition. I, from my part, wouldn't say that there's a competition and um but more rather rather friendship and also as you can guess also romance of course <laughs> yes and about the friendship uh as i said so maybe the first years when i participated in 2015 i felt kind of a competition because i was a young student and i was a bit scared to make mistakes and yeah I, f I felt like like I was studying. Your teachers tell you you should not make mistakes. You have to play perfect. And all that stuff, Christian teaches us completely different because he says, just make music, be yourself, and just play. And this is what I really learned from this orchestra and especially from him. And this is also what, what builds much deeper friendships than you could have at your university or other orchestras. And I think that's also the main reason for musicians, or that's at least what I hear quite often, that they that they are coming back to to 
to be with the Baltic Sea Philharmonic because they made friends there or they heard that the atmosphere is very special and you um, you get like a completely new experience. Um, yeah, Annika, there was one question. Um, do you feel differently identity-wise than before joining the Baltic Sea Philharmonic? Do you think you are more regional, more international? Uh, I think I feel much more different. So I had a lot of respect be before those nationalities, the language. I knew my English vocabulary is not the best. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. I felt really young and unexperienced, but now I uh, I got to know a lot of different people from many countries. I love those countries. I love the Baltic states. So, yeah, and also Scandinavia or Russia. It was really cool experiences to be there, but the people from those countries are also, they're really friends to me. I don't speak of them or think of them like this is a Russian guy, this is a Norwegian guy. So we don't have those yeah, nationalities in the mind anymore. Yeah. And there's also yeah. another question about how you can be part of the orchestra. There was one violinist I saw. Um, we have auditions. And they were also planned for this year. I don't know exactly the plans now because of Corona. But yeah, usually we have auditions where you can come and play. We have, and maybe I can just add this, we like for the June tour, which was supposed to happen or to start next week, we were planning to hold um, auditions in Berlin and in St. Petersburg. But since the tour um, is postponed now to next year, we hope to, um, to do the auditions also next year. But of course, we have to see how this entire situation is going. Um, maybe we can just say a couple of words to the auditions because we don't call them auditions. We call it talent tour um, because we think it's um, audition is a very hard word and it uh, implies already that you um, yeah, need to, need to play uh, in, in front of people and they will judge your playing and uh, maybe use very hard words. So um, our talent tour is, um, is organized a bit differently. Um, people who want to apply for the Baltic Sea Philharmonic will play in front of uh, our principals that are musicians who are um, part of the Baltic Sea Philharmonic for quite some time, like Annika is, for example. So um, when you apply, you play in front of these five, six um, musicians and you will work a bit with them and it's a very very nice casual atmosphere and then in the next step you will join the entire orchestra and Christian playing um, at the rehearsal so you can also feel the um, the energy that is uh, inside the orchestra and I think that's a very nice way of um, of also for the applicants to experience the Baltic Sea Philharmonic style. Okay, did we answer um, all the questions already? And of course, we're always looking for for uh, for new members for the Baltic Sea Philharmonic. Ah, okay, another question popped up. Are you all professional musicians? Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> some of us are also students. And if you come to auditions, you, yeah. So I think all have been students or are professionals, kind of, yes. But we also have players that are not professional musicals, musicians anymore. They study something else, but they, yes, they come back to their family, Baltic Sea Philharmonica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically, like, as I said before, um, our age range is between 17, 18, and up to maybe 34. So um, a lot of musicians stay with us for quite some time and they start when they're studying. They have, have more time then, they are more free. And um, But some of 
them also stay with us when they're working and um, have a proper job. So um, yes, it, it always depends on on each musician. Okay, so I I sent the link to the Shostakovich video into the into the chat if you want to um, if you want to check that out. And of course, we are also very active on social media. So um, we're happy if you if you follow us there and uh, give us a like. And there you will also find all um, the latest information on our upcoming con concert tours, videos, behind the scenes stories. Yeah. And also maybe one last thing about auditions. Um, you have seen we are playing from memory and in general, the plan is to play most of the concerts completely from memory. So this was also important with the last auditions that people that came and played, they played maybe a few minutes what they prepared, but then we played with them and we tried to find out how they fit in this system that you play by memory and you're free to um, to leave the step of what you learn at university that you play perfect that you don't make mistakes you don't care about mistakes but you just make music and this is what what we what i like the most of the auditions we have some Around. So the first is just the single player, each place before some musicians of us and maybe also conductor. And then you also play with the orchestra. And this is really was really cool in the past because people could see how we work and yeah, could feel the energy and what we want to reach. And we could show that. So you can also learn and experience and try out if it fits for you. And yeah, what you mentioned, that's, I think, also another huge point that we maybe haven't really talked about is, um, is the empowerment that, um, that within the techniques of memorization, for example, that you already mentioned now, um, that it, like through this, we, we want to empower people, we want to empower every single musician and, um, that's also something that I really like because uh, everyone can can grow and can experience and um, can come out of their comfort zone and um, also on this this uh, intercultural level can also grow out of any country specific or um, yes regional um, borders that there might be. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you so much for your for your questions and for your comments. Um, and yes, we hope you you like the movie. If you did, um, tell your friends and your family and um, check our concert days, dates. Maybe we are also coming to play um, in a city close to you. And of course, we would love to, to see you in the audience um, or also, of course, see you, see you online. And at the audition. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you, Annika and Katarina, for joining us tonight. I think it was really inspiring to many of us. You can also see that in the polls. And uh, also, as written by Carson, but I will just say that in the expo area, the uh, video you just shared, that's uploaded there in a booth. And there are also more information on the Baltic Sea Philharmonic. So everybody check that out later on. Yeah. And then... I just have to say thank you and everybody 
stay here. You can go to the networking area or the sessions. In the sessions, please switch on your video and talk to people randomly. And maybe Annika and Katarina also have a little while of time to still be there and maybe ask some more or answer some more questions if you want to be there. And otherwise, um, just chat with your peers in this area or network with other people in our session. And then we see each other tomorrow at 10 a.m. for the virtual breakfast and the lecture on the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region. Thank you very much for joining us today and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.